Hello folks, this is Jason Mutlak from the KSRS project and in this video I'll be talking about Ecos Polar Alignment Assistant tool. This tool uh, has been long requested uh, by the community and I just recently uh, completed developing the tool, at least now it's in beta. So it's a really uh, easy method to polar line your uh, German equatorial mount. The tool has two basic requirements. The first one is, of course, you need to have a, a German equatorial mount. The second one is you need to have a relatively wide FOV of one degrees or more. This is due to the limitation um, of solving images near the pole, uh, so either near the, the north or south celestial pole. With narrow FOVs, the uh, astrometry solver has a really hard time solving the images. So for now, at least for now, we require uh, one degrees or more. So to uh, kick off this process, you need to uh, point your mount toward the celestial pole, so close to Polaris if you're living in the northern hemisphere. And then you need to engage sidereal tracking. And the reason we need sidereal tracking to be engaged is that we, we will be doing some rotations commanded by ECAS. And so we need to have um, you know, the sidereal tracking engaging. We can see here the, the right ascension is actually changing. It means we're not really, uh, the sidereal tracking is not being engaged. So let's uh, go ahead and select somewhere near the celestial pole, just for example. And let's. Uh, Go ahead and track to this star right here. And then uh, we can click start to begin the process. And uh, as soon as the slew is over, we can see here the buttons are enabled again. We can capture our first image. Now this is captured and solved. And you can see the orientation of the camera. And you'll notice here that um, our FOV in this example is 94 times uh, 71 arc uh, minutes. And it's because I'm trying to simulate my uh, devices, my real devices. For me, I'm using uh, Zoo ASI 120M camera and uh, uh, Orion uh, guide scope, which is a 50 millimeter. 165 uh, milli, uh, millimeter focal length guide scope but because today is cloudy I couldn't do that so I just selected uh, the same values in the simulator you can see if you go to the telescope simulator options for the guide scope I put these values right here and for the CCD simulator I just changed the settings here to match those of the uh, of the ASI 120M. All right. So now, after the the first image is captured, it will ask you to either uh, rotate the mount east or west, and this is really just depends on on you. For me, east represents an obstruction in my observatory, uh, so I need to go west and. Uh, the number of degrees keep it between 30 and 60 degrees because we'll be doing this twice so it's, it's better to leave it as default unless you have a really good reason not to let's go ahead and do yeah this finally this auto mode uh, if you if you've done this use this tool for a few times and you know uh, you don't need to fine tune it uh, just click auto mode it will uh, complete the rest of the process automatically but for now let's go look at it step by step let's click rotate So now the mount is rotating 30 degrees west or uh, counterclockwise. And now let's just finish until it's complete. We're going to now capture the second image. We can do the same process by using two images. And I'll just click here, rotate again. But using three images is um, a lot more accurate. So now this is the, the second and final rotation. Just wait until it is completed. 
now we take the final image all right so now the final image is solved and as we you can see here is that this is the image and overlaid on the top of it is the uh, north celestial pole over here and you can see here this is the big green circle and with a small circle this is the right ascension axis so this is where the mount is actually rotating about and here the magenta line is is with a crosshair is the correction vector so you need to move something from here to here and um, you can now move the correction vector anywhere within the image preferably to a bright star so for example I could click here and move it so we need to move this star to the center here in order to correct the misalignment of the uh, mount axis with the uh, north celestial pole um, a good thing to do here is we can use the toggle full screen view so I toggled full screen view and let me just bring it over here and now you can zoom in and now it's just much better to uh, to do it here and uh, once this is done you can now start the refresh which will just uh, keep capturing your uh, from your CCD for uh, this uh, interval so let's, uh, let's say I want to refresh the image every two seconds and I just click that so um, let's go ahead and go back to our full screen view so now it's being refreshed and now you just simply need to go to your mount and adjust the altitude and azimuth knobs until this star is centered in the crosshair here now how to do that if you're if you're uh, if your computer is far away from your mount what I did is I used uh, team viewer logged into my machine uh, from my tablet and I just looked at my tablet I looked at the full screen view here and then I just adjusted the uh, the mount until uh, until the star is in the center uh, we will be supporting this view uh, not the full for alignment assistant tool but like to have a view like this it will be the possible in the K stars uh, light mobile uh, application on Android but for now uh, you can use uh, team viewer to achieve the same results so this is the uh, was just an overview of the uh, portal alignment assistant tool and I hope you guys find it uh, useful and let me know if you have any issues uh, cheers and uh, clear skies